Hey, it's Ben, and today I'm gonna to turn the lights off in here and we're gonna have some fun with some flashlights. And in the process, you're gonna learn a bit about how color works. And this will completely relate to Photoshop. In fact, in the end, I'll use white light and trick Photoshop into thinking this was color. So let's dive in and turn these lights off. Ah, what do we have here? Well, we have a fun little uh, trick where we can learn about Photoshop using flashlights. What do I have? I have a flashlight here that puts out white light. And we can see that over here, I have special flashlights that output red, green, and blue light. And that will relate to Photoshop in its RGB mode. It'll also tell us why we have certain colors of ink in our inkjet printer. So let's see what we can do. Well, first off, when I'm using these flashlights, know that if I move one close to the sheet of paper, I'm gonna concentrate the light in a smaller area and it's gonna get brighter. And if I put that on an object, I can control how much that object's being lit by how far away the flashlight is. And as I bring the flashlight further and further away, its light gets spread out. So the same amount of light covers a wider area. And if I get much further away, I can make that object much dimmer because the light is spread over a further area. And that's gonna be important when I wanna vary the amount of color I'm using because that's gonna let us learn a little bit about color. So let's put down that little white light and let's turn on our red, our green, and our blue flashlights. Now remember what white light looks like and let's see if we can create anything similar using these three colored lights. Well, I'm just gonna grab these three flashlights in one hand. Hopefully I can keep them together and let's lift it up and take a look at what we get. Well, you can see where they all overlap, we get white light. Now it's not perfectly white because these are really cheap flashlights and they have a slightly brighter middle. Uh, but if they were even, you'd get nice white light in the middle. But then if I look at this, I'm not just seeing red, green, and blue. I also see cyan, magenta, and yellow. And that's a hint as to why we have those colors of ink in our inkjet printers, and we use those when we print our printing press. So let's get an idea of how this works. What I'm gonna do is take one of the flashlights in a separate hand. And now I'm gonna push it closer to the paper and further away to make it more intense or less. And just pay attention to where its beam is and when I bring it closer, I'll figure out what color of light I happen to be using. I happen to grab the blue flashlight because I'm seeing more intensely blue. Uh, but look at where the blue is not hitting. Look beyond this. In fact, let me move the blue flashlight over here. Take a look at what you see. I see yellow. Well, right there, that tells me why we have yellow ink in our inkjet printers. Because what would yellow ink do? Well, if white light or a white sheet of paper being illuminated is the equivalent to having all three of these colors together, then when we use yellow ink, we've just removed all the blue light. And that's its sole job in life. The reason you have yellow ink in an inkjet printer is you're controlling how much blue you get. And if you would end up using 100% yellow ink, then it's like turning the flashlight off. If, on the other hand, you use less than 100%, then it's more like grabbing that flashlight and pulling it further from the paper to make it dimmer. It's just you wouldn't also spread out the amount of space. And if you use no yellow ink, it would be like keeping all the blue light that was hitting that sheet of paper. Because remember, white light is really the combination of these three colors. And so the white light falling on a sheet of paper, it has all those colors built within it. So then let me switch which flashlight I have in my hand. And I'm not sure which one I grabbed, so let's push it closer to the paper. Okay, it's the green flashlight. So the green flashlight, uh, if you look beyond where it's falling, in fact, I'll move the green right over here. Then if we wanna figure out what color of ink would act as if the green flashlight has been turned off or all the green light falling on the sheet of paper has been absorbed, then you're seeing it right there where those two flashlights overlap and it's magenta. If we use 100% magenta ink, it's as if the green flashlight is turned off. If on the other hand, we use a lesser amount of magenta ink, then it's as if we let the green flashlight turn on and we're just varying how much of it we're using. 
Then let's put all three of those together. And I think there's just one more I need to mess with and it'll take me a moment to grab it. And that would be the red. And I did something to its flashlight to get it focused different. I don't know what I did. There we go. Uh, but if I push it closer, you can see it's the red flashlight I have in my hand because you can see it concentrating that. And if I put it over here, now you can see what color of ink would absorb red light. And that would be cyan. That's the only reason we have cyan ink in our inkjet printers. Use 100% of it, and it's like turning off any red light that was falling on your sheet of paper. Use a lesser amount of cyan ink, and it's like varying the intensity of that red light. But remember, all three of those colors put together gives you white light. And then what that means is this white light over here, it isn't just white. In fact, I wish I had it here, but if I sent this white light through a prism, then you'd see a spectrum of colors. If you're not used to it, just do a Google search. Search for color spectrum and the word prism, and you'll probably see somebody shining a light like this through a prism, and you get all these colors plus even more. And we can create more colors here. In fact, look at what happens when I put my fingers in there, where, where I get a shadow of each one of those uh, flashlights. It's pretty cool. Whoa, wait a minute. I think I could do something related to that with this little guy. Huh. Let's see. I'll turn off my white flashlight to begin with. And what if I took the three flashlights and I lit this from three different angles? Because look at what's happening to the shadows in there. Well, this will be kind of uh, weird because I don't have three hands, but I'm going to hold one of the flashlights in my teeth. Then I'm going to spread out the other two and take a look at it. Where all three flashlights overlap, we get white. But where they don't perfectly overlap, we get some pretty cool colors. Well, let's see if we can trick Photoshop into making a very similar image, but using only the white flashlight. So let's put these three flashlights away. Let's grab the white one and let's actually turn off the others so they don't influence what we have. Now I'm going to take three pictures of this. I'll just grab a still frame from this video. I'm going to grab one shot that is lit from here. And when I do notice that over here, we got a shadow. Same with back there where this light couldn't reach. So imagine that shot right there. Then I'm going to switch to here and I'm going to take a second shot from this location. Now notice the shadow. That's where this light can't reach. Then I'll take a third one that's more like this. And I'm going to trick Photoshop into thinking I used red, green, and blue light. So let's head into Photoshop and see how we can do that. All right, I've taken screenshots from the three important moments in our video. I opened all three and all I've done is come up here to arrange and I said to show me three up stacked uh, and that made it so I can see them in separate windows. Now let's combine these three images into a single file. I'll use this as our base file. That was our first shot. I'm just going to come up here to this image and I'll use the move tool. I'll click within it and I'll drag down here. Then before I let go, I'll hold shift. Shift means center it in this document. If the documents are exactly the same size, and they are, then that should keep this in exactly the same spot. Then let's go to the other image, and I'll click there with the Move tool, drag over here, hold Shift before I let go. Then we can close the other two files because we already have them loaded into this one. I'll type Command-0 to zoom up, and now let's see if we can trick Photoshop into thinking we use three different colors of light. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to first turn these off and let's work with the background layer. I want the background layer to only act as if it used red light. To do so, I'll turn off its little lock symbol so it's not a special layer and I'm going to double click on its name and call it red just to remind me that that's the color it's going to use. Then I'm going to double click in the empty area out here. That brings you to this screen, which has a lot of options. We're going to ignore everything in here except for these checkboxes. They tell it what color of light this particular layer should be made from. And if you make it out of red, green, and blue, that's like having all three flashlights together. You get white light. But if I come in here and I turn off the green so it can't use any green uh, light, then it's like turning off the green flashlight. And if you remember what color we saw then, we saw magenta. So if I turn this off, 
suddenly it looks magenta. It's no different than me having those flashlights in my hand, the three color ones, and I turn green off. So let's click OK. Then I'm going to come up here. Well, actually, before, <laughs> let's turn off both green and blue. So all it's using is red light. So now it's like I lit that using the red flashlight. Then let's go to the middle one and turn it on. It's right now completely covering up the layer that's underneath because that's how layers usually work. But I'm going to double click on its name and call it green. Then I'll double click beyond the name out here to get to that special screen. And let's see what happens if I turn off the red checkbox. Now turning off the red checkbox will make this only be made out of green and blue. Although that won't be true, let me click cancel. Let's hide the layer underneath because that one's set to be red and it would have kicked in. Okay, now I'll double click to the right here and let's turn off red. When I do that, it's only gonna use green and blue light, just like using the green and blue flashlights. And when I only had green and blue together, what I saw was cyan, just like we're seeing here. But I want this not to be made out of green and blue. I want it only green. So let's turn off the blue checkbox. Now it looks as if I used the green flashlight. Let's turn that layer off and let's come to this one. Now, since we've already used red and green, this one I'm going to call blue. And I'm going to double click to the right of its name. And let's use just blue. Now, if I turn blue off, we would see what it looks like with no blue light whatsoever. And that would be just like using the red and green flashlights and turning the blue off. What I would usually see is yellow because yellow ink absorbs blue light. But in this case, I want to use blue and I don't want to use red or green. So now it looks as if I used the blue flashlight there. So we have one layer. It's been told to only use blue light. Then we have another layer told only to use green. And we have a third one told only to use red. Now, if we turn all three of those on at the same time, you're going to see it acting as if we used red, green, and blue light, even though I was using the white flashlight when I made this. And you can do this. All you need is a camera on a tripod so the camera doesn't move. And any flashlight. Heck, you can use the flashlight that's built into your phone if you want. Just come out on a dark night, put your camera on a tripod, and you're going to take three pictures and just light them from different directions. But hold on a second, let's compare this to what it looked like when we actually used the flashlights, because I did that. Remember when I had a flashlight in my teeth? I'll go take a screenshot of that and be right back. All right, I just pasted the actual image we captured using red, green, and blue flashlights to my topmost layer if you look at my layers panel. It is currently hidden, and so you're looking at the version we constructed a moment ago here, and let's turn on that top layer to compare. There was real flashlights of red, green, and blue, and here is white flashlight tricking Photoshop into thinking it was red, green, and blue. And the only difference really is that I didn't have the flashlights at the exact same angle between the two shots, and those flashlights don't put out the exact colors of red, green, and blue that we use to make our images in Photoshop. We could even blend those two results together. Right now, this topmost layer is completely obscuring our view of what's underneath, but I could either lower the opacity of it to blend them together, or I could play with a blending mode. Why don't we try to come in here and maybe set this to lighten? Therefore, only the areas of this top exposure that are brighter than what's underneath will contribute to the image. So let's try lighten. That's kind of an interesting combination. I can turn off the top layer to see the version I made with the white lights, and then I can blend in some of the other. And we got an even cooler looking end result. Well, this time we're gonna talk about absorbing light to create color, and we're gonna do it using this colorful little cube. So let's see what we can learn about it from this because it will apply to how you think about color in Photoshop. Here I have a special little cube that my wife got me as a gift. And all it is is a clear cube that has colored filters glued on to the ends. And from this angle, we have yellow on this side and yellow on the opposite side as well. But if I rotate it like this, now there's magenta on this side and magenta on the opposite. And if I rotate it like that, there's cyan on these two. So that means we have yellow on these two sides, magenta on those two sides, and cyan on the sides that are left over. 
Now using this, we can see what happens when we combine those various colors. Each one of these filters is absorbing light, just like ink that you would print on a inkjet printer would absorb light. And if I rotate this like that, now you're looking through the magenta side and the yellow side at the same time in the this bottom part and up here. And I got a special spot down here on the ground that's overly illuminated. There's a light source up above that's doing that, just to give you a good sense that it's red that's being produced when you combine yellow and magenta together. Then if I take this and rotate it, so we're looking at two different surfaces. Now we're looking at cyan and we're looking at yellow together. Uh, sure, here I can see the cyan and the yellow because they're not combining, but right there I see what I get when I combine the two together. And that's what it looks like with less light because that special light source above is not hitting a little magic spot to make it bright. And then here we can look at having cyan and magenta combined together. And if I get it right where that light source is, you can see we get a nice blue. And that's what it looks like if it doesn't get much light, it's just a much darker blue. So that means we can take this little cube and create all sorts of colors by moving it around and it gives us an idea of how those colors combine together. And with that, I think we can be ready to start talking about really defining and adjusting colors in Photoshop, and that's the subject of my next video.